Okay, now let's get you up to date with the latest news. Cam Redden is at Parliament House. You've had a busy week, Cam. I'm seeing you everywhere. Don't forget about our little show when you become a very, very big star. But let's start with this story that's pretty embarrassing for the PM. Oh, I'd never forget about you, Erin, don't worry. <laughs> Look, this one's fascinating. The Prime Minister's made a, a pretty big announcement this week about what his intentions are in terms of the government's involvement in the economy, signalling something of a shift where he wants the government to play a bigger role in attracting investment here to Australia. He's looking at some of these big initiatives overseas, particularly the Inflation Reduction Act in the United States, and saying Australian businesses will get left behind if the government doesn't look to partner up more with private, uh, the private sector and generate investment here. He's calling it the Made in Australia Act as part of the, uh, the Future Made in Australia plan. It has had some criticism, if not broadly welcomed by the business community, and some of that that's really cut through today has come from the head of the Productivity Commission, Danielle Wood, who was handpicked by the Treasurer for this role towards the end of last year. She's raised a reservation that does exist within the business community, the fear of zombie companies, essentially ones that you prop up with government money, but as soon as the subsidies fall away, that business just falls apart. It can't survive on its own. She's worried about that happening in this case and flagged that publicly today. But it earned this quite public dressing down from one of the most senior Labor figures in the country, a former treasurer, but currently <laughs> the, former pres the current president nationally of the Labor Party in Wayne Swan. Take a look at this. Well, she's completely out of touch with the international reality. I mean, all of our major competitors are doing this. I don't think it's a risk at all. We're in a global race for jobs and opportunities. We need cheaper energy. We need energy independence. Uh, and to do that, we've got to make up for a lost decade in energy policy. So that's quite the public lashing from a very <laughs> senior figure within the Labor Party, Erin. And Keep in mind, he was, uh, she was the Treasurer's pick for this job. Yep. He says he values her opinion and this is her <laughs> first contribution, really, in the role. So she might be uh, slightly less keen to speak out in the future. Oh, Who knows? We'll see. bless. It's just, I mean, saying it's gold is cruel to the government, but it is, it is gold, in my opinion. Um, what's the latest regarding our government and the war in Gaza, Cam? Yeah, a real escalation in the language, I think, around it this week. I remember we were talking over summer, Erin, about this suggestion from David Cameron in his early days as the British Foreign Secretary of recognising Palestine as an independent state, not at the end of a two-state solution process, but as a way to get there. And Penny Wong, in this major address in Canberra this week, really did endorse that idea, saying it could be a pathway to peace to try and break the cycle of violence as a way of building momentum behind the two-state solution. But ever since then, and it would be a significant shift as well if Australia was to do that, but importantly, thinking about recognising the state is different to actually doing it. The British government hasn't done it. The United States is keen to not go there yet. It's the view mm -hmm. of the US, for example, Erin, that uh, this process at the United Nations, which is looking at recognising Palestine and accepting its membership, there's an application on the table at the moment. Uh, the view within the US is that is premature, that Israel and, and leaders within Palestine need to first get rid of Hamas, need to second reform the Palestinian Authority and then figure out what a two-state solution like uh, would look like before we consider statehood. We've seen some pretty fiery language in recent days, especially from the coalition side, noting, Erin, that both leaders and both parties recognise there's an election within 12 months. Yeah. There is real electoral potency to this mm -hmm. issue and it's being felt in a lot of electorates. Yeah, and domestic politics at play, absolutely. Uh, Cam, a couple of quick ones to go, the first being the Cook by-election. Yeah, we can do this pretty quickly, Erin. It's a lay down Mazaire, one of the most boring by-elections I think I've ever seen. <laughs> Simon Kennedy is running against virtually unopposed. Yes, there yeah. are some minor party candidates there, but he's going to romp it in tomorrow OK, night. whatever, Labor's whatever, well, whatever, whatever. Easy, it's easy. Done. I need to show it's you I, my favourite part, though, from our beautiful, brilliant coverage today. Have a look at uh, this from our wonderful reporter, Juliet Bradley. Now, his wife, Nyla, was down here with him about an hour ago. She didn't want to be interviewed by Sky News because I'm told she's Hello. supposed to be at work today. So I spoke to his parents. Do you think Julia realises that <laughs> she's completely given that away now? <laughs> oh, straight under the bus. What about mum and dad picking up the slack? Good on them for stepping in. It's like those scenes there and you see the basketball game in the US or something when Kiss Cam comes yeah. up or something and people are really ordering. It's kind of like They're the equivalent of that without be on. actually being shown Exactly. On I yeah, love that. Yeah. I love that. Really quickly. Oh, I um, at work. Don't look at me. Exactly. Yeah. Um, John Howard, I've got him on later in the show, but he's upset about the naming of a building in Canberra. Just quickly, Cam, if you could fill us in on that. 
In 20 seconds or less, Aaron, this is the Health Department building in Canberra. It's known as the Sirius Building, which was, of course, the flagship of the First Fleet. It's currently undergoing a renaming process. Some suggestions that this might be in relation to concerns over how it would be perceived on Australia Day, connections to the First Fleet as well. John Howard's given this idea quite a significant whack today. It yeah. was starting, uh, started to be built under his leadership and was completed afterwards. A process I'm going to rename it, Erin. No idea if what they're going to call it. The department doesn't know either. Oh, honestly. That's we, the suggestion today. Where will this end? We cannot change our past. We've done more than almost any other country to make up for the negative elements of it. Enough. My Lord. Anyway, thank you, Cam. You were brilliant. Never enough from you. Thank you so much.